I was speaking this week with investors who are starting to report that they're seeing good inventory for like fix and flip opportunities in markets like Florida. So is this some stuff that's been dormant for the pandemic and as the various restrictions are starting to ease, they're coming to market? Is it part of a bigger trend? More inventory coming? Well, that's what we're looking at today in this week's Altos Research Market Update. Each week, Altos Research tracks every home for sale in the country, all the pricing, all the supply and demand, all the changes in those data, and make it available to you before it becomes uh, uh, visible in the traditional media channels. Um, so let's see what the data says for the week of September 13th, 2021. We are coming off a holiday week, and as usual, there are fewer new listings as people have a little vacation and school start season. Total available inventory of unsold single-family homes notched down this week to 431,000. You can see in the curve here that we're now four weeks into our end of summer peak inventory. Labor Day is always a dip in inventory and the total count will actually bounce around up and down a little bit for the next several weeks before declining late in October. Uh, the, the signal that we're looking for here is whether inventory climbs appreciably in October. We're at the end of the mortgage forbearance program. There are 400,000 homes that are exiting that program next month. Uh, the vast majority of these are renegotiating their loans, uh, the, the rates are super low, and people are staying in their homes. But some may get listed for sale. If a few percent of these hit the market, then our inventory could climb to 440 or 450,000. It's unclear whether the homeowners who are exiting forbearance next month are already actively working with their lenders and, and mortgage services or whether they're gonna like wait till November and then panic. Uh, but that's what we need to keep our eyes on is, is, is that a lot? Like, are there a bunch of those coming to market? It's probably not a lot, but it could move the needle on our inventory measure. So if you are one of those who are still bearish on the American consumer and, and see a housing bubble ready to burst, these next six, eight weeks of inventory measures will tell you if you're right. My suspicion is we're not gonna get a lot, but we're keeping our eye on to see exactly how many come to market in that time. The median price of a single family home in the US this week is $385,900. Uh, as we've been saying for several weeks now, uh, we'll end the year with about 10% price appreciation year over year. That's a ton of equity for every homeowner in the country. And it's why we expect relatively low, relatively few of the forbearance loans to, to actually go get sold. But some of those people will be capturing this new equity in cash. None of these properties are going to go into foreclosure because everybody has equity. The median price of the newly listed cohort, that's the lighter colored line here, is stays at $350,000. Uh, that's down a little bit from last week, but it's roughly the same level over the last month. Remember that this leading indicator tells us that even if we get an unusual flow of new listings this fall, that the demand is here. And so prices aren't gonna decline. In other words, the, the light line here tells us that there's plenty of room for more supply in the supply demand curve because the prices are already holding up. I have talked about price reductions as evidence that the market is trying to normalize. Normally about a third of homes on the market take a price cut before they sell. You can see the annual cycle here. Price reductions stop climbing dramatically late in the summer, and then finally peak in November before resetting at the end of the year. I've been watching price reductions because it's been actually climbing very steeply since the, the frenzy in April. And I'm interested if price reductions climb much higher, 
that's a sign that buyers have cold feet. And we can hear some anecdotes about that, some headline anecdotes about, it. but really, uh, if they're hot, they're turned off by, if buyers are actually turned off by high prices, the first thing that happens is you get price reductions. And what we can see right now is that we've actually rounded the corner here there. And, and so price reductions are not continuing to skyrocket. And we're actually gonna top out the year at about 30% fewer than normal. And that jibes with the trend I mentioned within the price of the new listings. Like if buyers are hesitant, the first thing you'll see is price reductions. So only currently only 27.5% of the active market has taken a price cut. That's fewer than normal. That's because there's greater demand than normal. And we're probably top out around 30%, as I mentioned. So uh, this is a leading indicator for price strength already built into next year's spring market. We know that the buyers are here. There's enough buyers here that we don't have to cut prices now. And that so those buyers are already, the ones who aren't getting their home now, are already in the market for next spring. It's bullish for next spring. Okay, finally today, let's look at the inverse of that measure. The percentage of homes on the market with price increases. These are investor flips, they're eye buyers a little bit. Uh, there are other marketing tactics. Normally a couple percent of the market is on the market uh, at a price increased from earlier. Last year at this time, sellers were roaring back into the market when they realized there's like insatiable demand. So they're coming back at higher prices. By March of this year, we were in the super frenzy. So anything that had come off over the holidays was now relisted at higher prices. But this is also the market of speculators buying lower and then turning around and selling higher, flipping very quickly. Those speculators have backed way off and, and we're down to 3.4% with price increases now. Uh, you can see that's flattening out too. Um, and we're settling back into a more normal range. Fewer speculators, frankly, uh, is, is, a, is a positive sign that things are not too crazy. Okay, that's all the data we have time for this week. If you're watching these videos and asking, Mike, can you look at my local market? The answer is yes. Go to altosresearch.com right now and just run a report for your local market. It's free. You can see anywhere in the country. There's a link in the description below here. Click that. If you're a realtor, make sure you book time with our team. You want to have your clients be able to see the data as soon as it becomes available. In this competitive market, they need you to keep them informed. So realtors, book a demo with our team and make sure that you are in front of your competition. As always, subscribe to the YouTube channel to get these videos every week. Okay, that's all we have time for this week. See you next week.